Hey you guys, it's Britt. Today I'm here to talk to you about the Doherty Dozen. I had a few things that came across my radar and I wanted to talk to you. So if you're interested, please keep watching. All right, you guys. So I always get heat when I talk about this family, but I don't care. I'm going to keep going because here's the thing. And if you're a Dockery Dozen fan or stan or whatever you consider yourself, the thing that I think a lot of them don't gather is that commentary is very normal on YouTube. So if Alicia puts out a vlog, then people are going to have comments about that vlog, whether they're good, bad, or indifferent. And that's just kind of the way that the internet works. So I'm sure that if you're used to watching her, what you consider wholesome channel, and then you see someone with opinions that are not in favor of her, it might catch you off guard. But I think that you also have to remind yourself that opinions, everyone has them. Some people decide to jump on YouTube and share them. Others decide to go off on each other in comment sections. Others decide to go to other platforms and share them there. But um, if you are coming into my comment section to name call or name call other subscribers or curse me out, like I'm not here for that. So, um, you know, if, if you have an opinion and you like her, that's fantastic. The last time I've seen fans like this was when I talk about like Colleen Ballinger and the Ballinger family. There are a lot of people that hate anyone who has an opinion about that family. But again, it goes back to this same concept of you post a vlog, people are going to have comments and not everyone's going to like your content. Not everyone likes my content. That's just the way it is. But as long as we're able to share them in a uh, somewhat productive manner, then we can all exist on the internet and it can be fun sometimes. So wanted to put that PSA in the beginning of the video. And we're going to talk about a lot of different stuff today. So this isn't just like one video. She uh, has put out a few videos that I have comments about. So let's start from the top. One of her adoptive uh, children, the child graduated a grade in elementary school. I'm trying to be vague just because I feel that's what's right. Alicia goes to this graduation ceremony at this elementary school, which is a public school with other kids that are there going through the same process that her child, her adoptive child is going through, graduation. Alicia takes it upon herself to vlog the whole thing, filming other people's kids. Then she goes as far as to share the graduation certificate. And it shows the principal's name, it shows the daughter's name, like all the information that you would need to figure out um, a lot of information about somebody. It's bad enough that people already know where the kids go to school. So this is, I've talked about this a lot with family vloggers. If you've made the decision that you want to vlog your kids and trash their privacy and have a family vlogging channel, that's one thing and it's bad enough don't get me wrong but there are a lot of other children that go to these schools and go to soccer practices and swim meets and graduation ceremonies their parents are protecting their identity so for someone like alicia doherty or brianna k or love meg or ruby frank to vlog other people's children and post it on a youtube channel and don't get me wrong, it's bad that Alicia's channel is grown to the size that it is because that's so many eyes on these kids who are not Alicia's to film. Even if her channel was half that size, you never know who's watching. What were to happen, let me just give this scenario, and this is a make-believe scenario, but it could be real, but it's not. It's very... Um, realistic is what I'm trying to say. Let's just say a set of parents has a child and that set of parents decides that they are going to separate. And let's just say that it's a really dark and tragic separation where there could be domestic violence. 
elements involved or some kind of salt, assault or SA um, or harassment. And let's just say that the one parent and the child finally get away and the child's in school, but they have tried to protect themselves from letting the other parent know exactly where the child is because things got very, very serious and they're held up in court going through a custody battle and all these kinds of things. And Alicia Doherty decides to vlog this child and show the school where the child is and possibly the other parent that both of them were trying to stay under the radar. So these are the kinds of situations. And I realize that that is an extreme example to give in this video. And that's kind of like the worst, one of the worst case scenarios, but it's very realistic. You never know who you're filming. And to so blatantly disregard that other people don't wanna be filmed and it's not like it was just an Instagram picture on a page that's private. This is a very public YouTube platform and TikTok and Instagram. And it's just like so many eyes on her channel for her to not only share where her kids go to school um, is bad enough, but the fact that she was so openly just vlogging all of these other kids and throwing the content onto the internet. I thought it was really distasteful. And this is not the first time that Alicia has done this. She films wherever she feels like filming. So she had another child that went to Odyssey of the Mind and she shared that that child would be without parents, shared the name of the event, the state that the event was in, and the dates that the child would be there. On top of it, she's also told people what time her kids get off the bus. She's also shared her home address multiple times. And she's also shared the layout of her house, which is so creepy. Nobody needs to know where kids sleep at night, period. I don't care if you wanna do a house tour of your entire house, leave your kids' bedrooms off limits. It is so weird, the concept of taking a camera into your uh, child's bedroom, filming that and putting it onto the internet. Why? It's weird. And it feeds into those toxic parasocial relationships that she's constantly feeding into, like the one with Auntie Lauren. We've talked about Auntie Lauren a few times. And if you guys think that these weird people cannot become obsessed with families and children. I recently watched One Hour Photo with Robin Williams. If you guys haven't seen that, watch that movie. You can rent it on YouTube and other platforms. I think uh, Amazon Prime has it. Watch that because it really shows a uh, situation where you would not think that this person is like becoming obsessed with your family. And with these family vloggers so openly posting so much about their children, there are absolutely people like Auntie Lauren that are in their mind, they are part of your family and you're feeding into it. That's the problem. <laughs> Hey guys, Auntie Lauren here at a joint banner between North Melbourne Cheese Squad and Western Bulldogs Cheese Squad. Hi guys! Everyone say hello to Nana Shazza. Hi guys! Everyone say hello to Annette. Hello! Hi guys! Everyone say hello to Bernadette. Hello! Everyone say hello to Nana Shazza. Hi guys! Come on, give me a follow! You won't be disappointed! Hello! Hi guys! 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 Hello! Hi it essentially is just another situation where Alicia was platforming herself for all of the wonderful things that she does for her kids, specifically one of her adoptive kids. She's talking about the child in the video and 
throw shade at his mother and then not much longer says what a great life he's been given because of her and her home um it's answered a lot of questions for him they spent the entire four days um she told him why she made the decision to give him up why she wanted him to have a better life and a second chance and a lot of details that he needed to hear to understand why his life took this path into adoption and into our family and why he unfortunately is unable to live with her um because that's something that you know he's been wanting he wants that hole filled but this was able to fill that hole instead by giving him a better understanding for why his life situation turned out the way that it did meeting his birth mom has affected alex in a very positive way it answered a lot of questions it closed the gap um, it it really freed him up to appreciate and enjoy this life that he has here and also understand and sympathize with his mom's decision to give him up for adoption um which i understand i've said before i think adoption is amazing we definitely need um you know to completely just rebuild the foster care system like it's an entire mess and i'm not even fully educated on it but what i do know about it is it's a fucking disaster so yes adopting is great but if you're going to adopt and then use it as a way to gain sympathy or clout on social media and if you're going to use those kids stories to booster engagement on a social media platform to me you're not you're just not doing it for the right reason you're not um you're not sharing that story for the right reason you're doing it for yourself and whether it's for pity or attention or money none of those are the right reasons that's my opinion i know that these kids can have their lives completely changed because of adoptive and foster parents those kids still deserve all of the privacy all of the respect and they also don't need their birth parents to be publicly shamed on a social media platform i don't give a damn what they did if they're having mental health issues uh drug addiction alcohol problems whatever the situation is that is for that child to learn about once they are of age. And if they share themselves about what their birth parents were like, then that's on them. It's not for the adoptive parent to use for their own self-serving reasons. Now, I don't know why this video would even be remotely entertaining unless you're just some kind of weirdo who likes to watch someone fold children's underwear, but Alicia decided to do this super long video of her folding laundry. It was so boring and almost put me to sleep. I don't want to go into detail, but she mentioned something about period underwear. And to me that just that word, th those two words should never be used on a video relating to minors. It does not um, need to be intertwined into your content. I don't care if you're washing laundry, folding it, or whatever you're doing. To me, I don't understand why you would need to share that. I don't know why it would even be a topic of discussion. Now, if you want to talk about it from your experience and your point of view for yourself, that's one thing. But why would you even mention that on, on behalf of one of your daughters. So like I said, I don't want to talk about it for very long because it's very weird. But these are the kinds of things that if I was a subscriber of hers and I liked most of her content, I would ask her, why are you talking about that regarding one of your kids? Why is that even on your mind and coming out of your mouth? The next thing is they had a pizza night and it looked like a load of fun. Um, you know, there's really nothing to hate on as far as who, who doesn't want to have a pizza night. And that's the thing. A lot of these little activities that she does with like dinner and stuff like that. Um, it's a lot of fun for the kids. But when you actually review the um, vlog and you're sitting there watching it, 
you really see how out of control a lot of these situations become. And one thing that happened, I also saw the subreddit was talking about this, but her one daughter was getting on the adoptive son for, quote, eating too much. And she was just kind of like sitting there bitching about it. And Alicia had to kind of jump on her and say, I can make more. But, you know, if Alicia's going to defend her decision to buy these kids all these junk food items and that's the only thing that they'll eat and it's comfort and all this kind of stuff um there should have been a bigger response from her when it comes to one of her bio kids shaming one of the adoptive kids for eating too much Sorry. we're almost out of sausage because of you it's okay and i, I want some. i can make more that's enough jordan you're done. Um, put the instead of it just being like oh i'll make more it should have been a conversation with the child and this is also a child that has been shown on vlogs to just run amok and cuss and flip people off and she's kind of you know a little wild from from what i've seen and that's not me passing judgment it's just calling it for what it is um but if you're gonna defend buying junk food because it's comfort then you also can't allow one of your bio kids to shame the child for wanting to eat too much and this wasn't even junk food it was dinner they did this challenge on tiktok and a lot of people have been talking about this it's where you like slap each other with a tortilla really weird i don't know some of this stuff on tiktok is just i see it and i'm like okay but why did you have to recreate it it wasn't anything worth recreating that's just my opinion especially with stuff like this because when you're dealing with a parent and a child um a a challenge can quickly turn into something that the viewer sees as problematic and that's exactly what happened with this alicia takes the tortilla and slaps the child across the face and when it's his turn to do it to her he couldn't even do it <laughs> <laughs> so i think that really speaks volumes to a lot of the people watching where it's him not wanting to do this even though it's supposed to be this silly little challenge and everyone's laughing and it's all fun and games even that situation considered, he still could not do it to her because he obviously loves his mom. Alicia's also come out in this laundry folding extravaganza video and she said that her white claw has been missing. So now instead of having white claw in the garage, she has to keep it locked in her bedroom. In case you're wondering why I have white claw in my bedroom, um... I can't keep it in the garage anymore. It was just like disappearing. I don't know. Suspicious activity. So now it has to get locked in my room. And I'm not sure if, I don't know, like is she drinking more than she thinks she is and maybe she forgot or are some of the kids getting into it i don't know of course that is just alleged i'm just throwing out different scenarios but you have to keep alcohol locked in your room to me that is a massive red flag and a topic of conversation has been should these kids be around alcohol and i've mentioned it and many other people have mentioned it too when you're bolstering yourself on this message of I'm such a great person because I saved these children from really bad situations, their birth parents are just, you know, alcoholics and there's uh, fetal alcohol syndrome and, um, you know, predisposition to alcoholism and addiction and all these really scary things. You've used that to bolster yourself, but you're putting them in a household where in taking alcohol on a very consistent basis is very normalized. 
So I want to know what y'all think about that. I'm not going to give my final decision, but I will say that it's definitely a red flag to me. And the amount of shade that Alicia has thrown at these, um, many of these birth parents to make herself look like the savior that she thinks she is. And then to know that, I mean, the woman goes through like four cases of White Claw a week sometimes. She's on the regular buying anywhere from two to four cases of White Claw once a week. And now it's coming up missing from the garage. What is going on? Um, but I'd really love to know from you guys, how do you feel about them, you know, being taken from what's probably not the best situation for kids to grow up in. Obviously they were adopted for a reason. What does that say for them to be around this alcohol, especially when you're a teen? I mean, you guys, like I used to steal alcohol from my parents. Um, I, I was doing a lot of not good stuff back then, but teens are curious. And when you have teens that are predisposed to addiction that just adds another layer to kind of a really complicated situation. So again, I'm not qualified to talk about that, but just a surface level understanding is common sense. If you have a predisposition to alcohol, then you should probably, you know, maybe not be drinking multiple multiple alcoholic beverages every night around around the kids. I don't know. What do you guys think? Last thing I want to talk about is religion. So on Alicia's schedule, I saw that they have church, okay? Church on Sunday. Great. My question is, are the kids forced to go to church? And this is a really interesting topic. I was listening to Jordan and McKay and they, I really like their podcast, just a quick rundown. They used to kind of, you know, associate with Dad Challenge podcast. He went to that trucker convoy. They denounced him and I haven't heard them talk about him since then. So since that unfolded, I've been listening to a lot of their videos. Um, long story short, I enjoy their channel. But they were talking about Not Enough Nelsons and how Not Enough Nelsons has a lot of adoptive kids, adopted kids, and they expect their kids to go to temple with them. They're Mormon. And I kind of wonder, does the same thing apply here? Like, do the kids have to go to church? And what if one of the kids, you know, came from an atheist home or a Buddhist home or a Jewish, you know, where, where is the line of not expecting them to go to church because they were raised in a different faith or a different type of religion? That to me is really interesting. I'm not sure if it's a requirement. I don't know if there's like an opt out, like do they have an option at a certain age to not go? I just often think about how toxic religion can be, especially to, um, you know, teens and young adults, a lot of times when you're dealing with Christianity, there is a lot of toxic purity culture involved in that. I'm not saying for everyone, but purity culture and some churches kind of go hand in hand. And so I just find that to be kind of another interesting thing. I would love to know what you guys think about the idea of church being forced or expected by the kids. So either way, I know that those were a lot of random little tidbits of info, but I'm definitely not going to make a separate video for all of these things, but I'll be keeping an eye on their subreddits. You know, Alicia's being talked about for good reason. I'm not here to bully her or degrade her or harass her, but I am here to give public commentary on public content. That's what I do for a lot of different creators especially when it comes to family vloggers. And she, in my opinion, is oversharing. She's using these kids' stories for her own gain. Even, let's just say that it's only for a little bit of sympathy. It's not because she's making a boatload of money. 
But even if it was just that, that's still enough to have a conversation about it. That's a problem. You're not supposed to adopt and do this for self-serving reasons. You're supposed to be extremely selfless and you're doing this because you can offer this child a um, much better life than they would obviously be getting in the foster care system or with their birth parents. So either way, that's going to be it for now. If you like the video, please leave a like in the comments. And if you'd like to see more from me in the future, please subscribe. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.